What up? And welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we do an example problem on axial deformation in mechanics of materials for axially loaded members. And in this problem, we're going to deal with an aluminum rod with a diameter of D equal to 15 millimeters. And it's going to have a linearly distributed load. And this is going to be a good video to watch if you've never encountered a linearly distributed or triangular loading on a, a axially loaded structure and had to calculate the deformation. We'll go work through that process. And what we're going to want to do in this problem is determine the deformation of point A with respect to that fixed end. And let me show you what it looks like. Here's my schematic. So I have this rod here. It's this is we'll call this point A and the fixed end we'll just call B and it has a linearly distributed load on it which looks like this. And you'll see that the arrows are getting smaller and smaller which indicates a linearly distributed load at the point A that distributed load has an intensity of 0 and at point B it has an intensity of 30 kilonewtons per meter. And the length of this rod is 600 millimeters. And now what we want to do is determine the deformation of point A with respect to point B of this axially loaded rod. And in order for us to do that, we're going to be applying this axial, the just generic axial deformation relationship. You might know this equation as this delta. The axial deformation is equal to the integral of from zero to some length of the internal loading as a function of x divided by E, the modulus of elasticity of the material over the cross-sectional area integrated with respect to dx. And this is going to help us calculate. This is a formulation we're going to use for axial deformation because we have a distributed loading between points A and B or these discontinuities A and B. We know that the normal force, that internal normal, will vary along the length of the rod. All right, so let's go ahead. The first thing that we're going to need to do is, is really a statics problem and determine the internal load along the length of this rod AB. And for this problem, you know, I've got, I have two discontinuities, a discontinuity at A, a discontinuity at B. So that means I just need to make one cut to evaluate the internal loading. And what I want to do here is find N of X or the internal normal force as a function of position along the length of the rod. So I make this cut through the segment and I'm going to choose the left side of the free body diagram because if I choose the right side I'm going to need to calculate the reaction here at B. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the left side because end A is free and I have all the information that I need. And here is my cut one and on the left side you can see here I have this distributed load somewhere. I don't know what the magnitude of that distributed load is and I'm going to choose an origin at a discontinuity and boom I'm going to call this the coordinate x1 and this will be my normal force as a function of x1 and by equilibrium or by some of the forces in the horizontal I would have n1 minus 1 half w times x1 equals 0 because the resultant of this linearly distributed load is the area of the triangle or the area under the distributed load and that's just the area of a triangle. Now what we don't know in this problem is what the heck, what is w? And w, you can try to create a function. You could write out a function, you know, using y equals mx plus b and try to come up with a function for w. But if you recall, if I continue this all the way to the end, to the fixed point here, the magnitude of this load is 30 kilonewtons per meter. And that entire length from here to here is 600 millimeters or 0.6 meters and by similar triangle I could say that W over X1 is equal to 30 kilonewtons per meter over the 0.6 meters and that tells me that W or the distributed load intensity at X1 at some point X1 is equal to 50 kilonewtons per meter squared times x1 and now i just want to take this thing 
and substitute it into my equilibrium equation and that will tell me that the internal normal force as a function of x1 is equal to one half times 50 kilonewtons per meter squared times x1 times x1 again and when I work this out this will give me 25 kilonewtons per meter squared times x1 squared and really if you've done this you're halfway there and now what we're left with is is trying to figure out or substituting into our deformation axial deformation relationship and and really integrating so here and since there's only one segment to look at what we're trying to do is calculate the deformation of A with respect to the fixed end or with respect to B. And B is not going anywhere because it's fixed. So the deformation of A with respect to B will just give me the deformation of A itself, right? So here, I'm going to set up my integral relationship. So here, I need some bounds of the integral, put that in later. But here was the generic form of that equation before. And in this problem, I have a constant area and, a, and one material. I only have aluminum. So EA is constant. So that's, that's good news, right? And here, I'm just going to substitute for that internal normal force function. So in this case, this will be 25 kilonewtons per meter squared times x1 squared. I'm going to integrate this over dx1 over EA which is constant. So I don't have to worry about this as a function of x1. Now the bounds of my integral, this can always be a little tricky, but one thing to remember is that the bounds of the integral for x1 are always from discontinuity to discontinuity or wherever this thing applies. So in this case, our discontinuity was at a to b. So that would just be from 0 to 0.6 meters. And now the easy part, you know, who would ever think that the easy part would just be to do the calculus, right? All right, welcome to engineering. So here I can factor this EA out, the one over EA. So this is gonna be one over, I've got aluminum. The 70 gigapascals, one gigapascal is equal to one kilonewton per millimeter squared. And that's a very convenient conversion because a lot of times you'll see things given in terms of kilonewtons and millimeters. And you know that there's a direct correlation with, with gigapascal. So this is kilonewton per millimeter squared times the area. The area of a circle is pi over four times the diameter squared, which is 15 millimeters and now if I just go ahead and I integrate this this is going to be Evaluated from 0 to 0 0.6 meter one thing you'll want to notice is that hey check this out the millimeters squared Cancels out with the millimeter squared from the area and this bottom number right here will be left in kilonewtons And when I work this integral out, I will get and my deformation would be 0 0.0001455 meters, which in millimeters is equal to 0 0.1455 millimeters. And here is the deformation of point A with respect to the fixed end at B. This result is positive because I have elongation. All right, so hopefully this was a useful video, useful, useful introductory application for a linearly distributed axial load on a rod. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Take it easy. Structure